Good morning. Today's first scripture lesson is Psalms 24. Listen for the word of God. God claims earth and everything in it. God claims the world and all who live on it. He built it on ocean foundations, laid it out on rivers girders. Who can climb Mount God? Who can scale the holy north face? Only the clean handed, only the pure hearted. Men who won't cheat, women who won't seduce. God is at their side. With God's help, they make it. This, Jacob, is what happens to God seekers, God questers. Wake up, you sleepyhead city. Wake up, you sleepyhead people. The King of Glory is ready to enter. Who is this King of Glory? God, armed and battle ready. Wake up, you sleepyhead city. Wake up, you sleepyhead people. The King of Glory is ready to enter. Who is this King of Glory? God of the angel's army. He is the King of Glory. Today's second scripture lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Listen for the word of God. How blessed is God and what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and it takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, he had settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We are a free people, free of penalties and punishments, chalked up by all our misdeeds, and not just barely free, entire either abundantly free he thought of everything provided for everything we could possibly need let us in on the plans he took such delight in making he set it out all out before us in christ a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him everything in deepest heaven everything on planet earth it's in christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This down payment from God is the first installment on what's coming, a reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us, a praising and glorious life. This is the word for the people of God. Well, we're all, <clears throat> we're all very familiar with the 23rd Psalm, but what a joy it was to hear the 24th Psalm read this morning. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about storms and thorns and all kinds of troubles and things. So I thought maybe today we'd take a break and listen to how blessed we are. In Psalm 24, the presence of God, King David could not help but release his inhibitions and praise God with all that he was. He danced without shame, even if... He wasn't a Methodist and couldn't get his hands up very high. He danced before the Lord. He danced in the shadow of the Ark of the Covenant that served as a symbol of God's presence for the Israelites. And all of creation reminds us that God is with us today. You know, Lenny took me out on a hike uh, last week around Sylvan Lake up Little Devil's Tower and in the Black Hills, the views were magnificent. Our very breath exists because God created us. And all of creation belongs to God, as the psalmist proclaims. For this we rejoice and praise God, like David danced and sang. Those of you who did come on Wednesday night and witness the Imani Malele kids dancing and worshiping saw a spirit driven praise and worship. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
mentioned in our passage from Ephesians today, we're reminded that God has not abandoned us. We're children of God through Jesus Christ. By sending the Holy Spirit, God guides us according to God's will and plan. For this we rejoice and we praise. As the church, we're called to dance and shout and pray and live in praise of God's glory. We are most certainly blessed. In the late 1800s, while crossing the Atlantic on an ocean liner, the English Baptist pastor and evangelist F.B. Meyer was asked to preach to the first class passengers. At the captain's request, he spoke on being blessed. An agnostic who was present at the service was asked by his friends, well, what did you think of Dr. Meyer's sermon? He answered, I didn't believe a word of it. That afternoon, Dr. Meyer went to speak to the steerage passengers. Many of the listeners at his morning address went along, including the agnostic who claimed he just wanted to hear what the babbler had to say. Before starting for the service, the agnostic put two oranges in his pocket. On his way, he passed an elderly woman sitting in her deck chair fast asleep. Her hands were open. In the spirit of fun, the agnostic put the two out oranges in her outstretched hands. After the meeting, he saw the old lady happily eating one of the pieces of fruit. Smiling, the agnostic said to her, you seem to be enjoying that orange. She replied, yes, sir. My father is very good to me. The agnostic man replied, I don't want to appear rude, but your father, surely your father can't still be alive. With enthusiasm, she replied, he is very much alive. Well, what do you mean? Press the agnostic. She explained, I'll tell you, sir, I've been seasick for days. I was asking God somehow to send me an orange. I suppose I fell asleep while I was praying. When I woke, I found he had not only sent me one orange, but two. God blessed me by answering my prayer with even more than I asked for. The agnostic was speechless. Our epistle reading today is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We got better acquainted with Paul last week, and I encourage you to read through Ephesians, perhaps even in one sitting. It's only six chapters long, and you will be richly blessed, I promise. And how can I be so confident that you'll be richly blessed? Because it's God's Word. This is the Gospel set forth in all of its richness and blessing. St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians is a glorious gem shining forth the beauty of God's grace, Christ from every angle. Ephesians takes us from the grand cosmic sweep of creation to God's plan for the ages, down to the practical realities of everyday life. It's all here in one mid-sized letter. Christ, eternity, the cross, the church, grace, faith, good works, the new life in Christ, marriage, family, spiritual warfare, all of these themes. Paul deals with all of them in this letter. The letter to the Ephesians is as helpful to the church in the 21st century as it was to that church in Ephesus in the first century. Our reading from Ephesians today is really the opening statement of this epistle. It comes right after a standard introduction, Paul, an apostle of Christ, to the saints in Ephesus. Grace to you and peace. Then in verses 3 through 14, that's our text for today, Paul launches into a grand doxology a great acclamation of God's goodness, which sets the tone for the rest of the letter. It's like he's been thinking all along about the rich blessings that God has showered on us in Christ, and then he gushes forth with this torrent of praise for our triune God. Paul surveys the whole sweep and scope of God's eternal plan for the cosmos. It's the big picture Paul is giving us here. He takes us from eternity to eternity to see what God is doing in all of this, to reflect on the God, cosmic dimensions of God's plan. It's the big picture. But the picture has a purpose and a focus. God's plan is centered in Christ. And the picture is not so big that it doesn't include us, because it does. 
Our text begins, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us. Blessed be the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. And so Paul will begin to extol these marvelous spiritual blessings. This portion of our text emphasizes how God the Father chose us to belong to him before the foundation of the world. We did not choose God. God chose us. He chose us in love. He destined us to be his children. That means he chose us beforehand, before creation, to be his own. It's a comforting teaching of scripture because it reassures us that even our coming to faith in Jesus Christ is God's doing. It doesn't depend on us or on the strength of our decision. God chose us to believe in Christ and to belong to him. It's not because of anything in us. It's because of grace, God's free gift. We couldn't have chosen God. We were dead in our trespasses and sins, as Paul will say later in chapter 2. But God made us alive in Christ, bringing us to faith through the word of the gospel. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your doing. It is the gift of God. These are the familiar words of Ephesians chapter 2, and they fit so well with what Paul is saying here in chapter 1. God chose us in advance. He destined us for salvation. He gave us the gift of faith. The whole thing is by his grace. So the doctrine of election that God chose us, we did not choose him, is one of those spiritual blessings with which God has blessed us. We're chosen by God. And that's to the praise of his glorious grace. Our text continues. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and on earth in him, in Christ. Notice how many times Paul repeats this key phrase throughout the entire text. Over and over again, he says, in Christ, in him, through Jesus Christ. All of God's plan for eternity is centered in the person of Jesus Christ. Our entire salvation comes to us through our connection with Christ. Apart from him, there isn't any salvation. In him, in Christ, we have every spiritual blessing. The salvation God planned for us before the foundation of the world was accomplished in time, in human history, with the coming of Christ into the world. Paul calls it redemption. In him, we have redemption. And it's a great word in the biblical vocabulary. Redemption means a release from bondage by the payment of a price. We were in bondage. We were unable to free ourselves. There was nothing we could do, no amount we could pay to get ourselves out of our slavery to sin and Satan. But Christ came and he did it for us. He redeemed us. He set us free. How? By paying a price we could never pay. Because there's nothing so valuable in all heaven or earth is the holy blood of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood. Christ shed his blood on the cross when he died to take away our trespasses. He, the sinless one, died suffering the punishment that we deserve. Now in Christ we have freedom. In Christ we have forgiveness, liberation, and redemption. We have been set free from death, eternal death, and have been set on the path to eternal life. 
Do you feel weighed down by your sins? Are you troubled in your conscience? Does your guilt before God hang heavy on you? Then hear this today. You are redeemed in Christ. You have full forgiveness in Him. God doesn't hold your sins against you. Jesus said, shed His blood for you, and you are free. Believe it. It's true. Be blessed by this. Our text concludes, In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Him who accomplishes all things according to His counsel and will, so that we who were first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in Him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of His glory. So now we reach forward into the future, toward an eternal future, the life of the age to come. That is our inheritance. Our text says, in Him we have obtained an inheritance. Christ has won for us this glorious inheritance namely eternal life with God in bliss forever. He won it by his death and his resurrection. The resurrection of the body and life everlasting, this is the hope we have, a hope to hold on to. It's the nature of this inheritance that we have not yet acquired full possession of it. Right now our bodies are still subject to decay and to death. We still struggle with sin and storms and thorns, where is the hope? It's in the inheritance that is ours in Christ. You and I hold the title to this inheritance. We're in line to receive it because you and I have been baptized in Christ. We have been made joint heirs with Him. We believe in Christ. We trust in Him. The gospel gives us this faith. And so we've been sealed by the Spirit. We were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. You see, the Holy Spirit is the guarantee, the deposit, the down payment telling us that there's more on the way, more to come. The Holy Spirit keeps us in the one true faith by means of the word and sacrament which continue to strengthen us. We celebrated Holy Communion last week and we continue to celebrate it every week in the chapel. It's available to you to strengthen that channel to God. This means of grace blesses us. We've been sealed with the Spirit. And so we look forward with confidence and a sure hope to taking ownership of the inheritance that awaits us, the everlasting Christ, life that Christ won for us. Chosen by God, redeemed by Christ, and sealed with the Spirit. Here in Ephesians 1, we've been taking in the big picture Paul has been putting before our eyes. It's a grand and glorious picture, stretching from eternity to eternity. God has a plan and a purpose that he is accomplishing. His purpose, which he set forth in Christ, is a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, things on earth, Everything in the whole universe finds its proper place in relation to Christ our Lord, the Son of God. Yes, God's plan centered in Christ, and it means riches and grace and every spiritual blessing for you and for me. All of this to the praise of His glorious grace. Be blessed. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your many blessings upon us. We thank you that we have this great power, this wonderful wisdom, this deep insight, this flow of abundance surging through our lives, blessing us in every way, through us, and helping us serve others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.